Hello here with a new video just made for you guys. In fact, today is another viewer request video and it's building off of last week's video. Some folks wanted to know, I have Stellarium. How do I get my backyard images in Stellarium so I know where the stars are going to show up? Well, I have been working on that diligently this week and actually it really is not that hard to do. So this week I'm going to show you guys how to put your own background in Stellarium so you can plan your sessions better and know where the stars are. Thing we need to do is we actually need to take a picture of our backyard. In fact, we need a 360 degree image of our backyard so we can fill out the entire view in Stellarium. Now, I used my phone, make life easy wherever you can, instead of breaking out all the fancy cameras and stitching photos together in Photoshop. And at first I started with the panorama photo option with the iPhone but that only did 180 degrees. And then when I tried to take a second one and stitch them in Photoshop, it got really kind of messy. So, light bulb, there's an app for that. Yes, there is. In fact, I downloaded an app called Pano360. Now this is for Apple, but I'm sure every manufacturer has a panorama app that will allow you to do a full 360 degree image. All right, so, this app, you can see right here, is my entire backyard. It has a start button, and as soon as the start button shows up, it's going to give me two balls. And what it's wanting me to do is to get this flashy ball in the middle, and as soon as I get it to this next one, come on, get it there. You saw it just did a little flash there, and now I will move it over a little bit more until it gives me a second flash. And I will do that until I am completely around my entire backyard. All right, now that we have seen the app, I'm going to go stand over by my telescope because you want to make yourself, make the telescope the center of your image, okay? Because the stars look different depending on where you're standing in the backyard. So now that I've got my app, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to take some images, all right? So hang tight. All right, so when it is done, it is gonna stitch together an entire pano of my backyard. And I can, I can't operate my phone this way, guys. I'm just not that talented. All right, so here we go. We got, ah, that sucks. So when it was done taking the image, it created a long pano of my entire backyard. And what I'm going to do here is it has a little download button here and I can save this image to my camera roll. So now that I've got it saved to my camera roll, let's scroll over here and show you what it looks like. There we go. It's a really long image. Let's see if it flips around of my backyard. Now I'm going to take this image off of my phone, put it into my PC and work on it in Stellarium. So let's jump over to the computer and get this all stitched together. All right, we're over here in Stellarium, and the ultimate goal of this project is to add your personal background in Stellarium so you can have an idea of where the stars will show up around your trees and other um, obstacles that you may have. And you see, this is the panorama picture that I took while we were outside just a couple moments ago. Now, I did a little bit extra on this particular image, and I'll show you how to do that if you desire. I cut out a couple holes in the trees so I can see, you know, where my sucker holes are, so to speak. And my ultimate image had a harsh line right here of where the limits of my camera was. And I knew that the trees went up just a little bit more, so I did a little bit of cloning. But I also, let me turn on what the atmosphere would look like here and that was the wrong button. 
turn the landscape back on right here atmosphere okay if it was dark out you can see you can barely see my house but this was my preference and I'll show you two different ways you can do this I made my layer um, I changed the opacity of it down some because I wanted to see the stars as they were about to break through my um, my obstacles and you can choose to do this or you can leave it block solid and you won't see any of these stars that are in your background you will only see them once they reach outside of your background okay so let's hop over to Photoshop so we can see what our next step is going to be all right our first step is we need to scale this image so go under let's see I think it's image image size and we've got pixels here and we want to change the width of this to 20 48 pixels and say okay zoom in some and the next step we're going to go back to image canvas size and make sure the relative position is in the center we're going to have this as pixels and change the height to 1024 and hit okay all right so now the first step we do is our background is locked let's double click it and unlock it and say okay i'm going to grab the selector tool grab this black section here and hit delete on the keyboard and you can see I've got a transparent background in the back I've got a transparency going on in the background so let's see control D will turn off those marching ants and you can see my bottom here is all black that is okay my horizon is about in the center of the image which is what we want but what we need to do now is to delete the sky so come over here to this magic wand wizard here and click on it and I've got my tolerance set pretty high at 32 and up here every time I click the mouse it is going to continue to add to selection so we'll zoom in here and I'm just going to keep clicking on the blue because it's the blue that we want to go away and I'm just zooming in with the wheel of my mouse I'm gonna hit some more blue and if you want you can even grab the holes in the middle all right there we go and all you have to do now is hit delete on the keyboard and now we have a bunch of um, holes in our background do control D to get rid of the marching ants now as I showed you before this is a pretty harsh line so I'm going to use the clone stamp tool clone and I'm going to grab with the alternate key grab some of this down here and I'm just going to clone in a little bit of the top of the tree so it's just not such a harsh line uh, that's just my personal preference I know I can't do anything above here and I'll grab some down here And I just keep moving my base point by choosing the alternate button okay does not have to be perfect this is just a matter of I know I can't image in this area so I'm just making it obvious on the screen okay so now that I've got this set up for my background I am going to do one more step here I want to have a gradient on the bottom actually let's go ahead and put a layer mask on here this will help I'm gonna grab click shift hold it that's a little bit harsh let's do an undo let's try just a little bit nah this is you know it, it takes a couple tries here for you to get just the way you want I'm gonna change the opacity down to 47 there we go so I'm gonna see what is coming up on the horizon it's a possibility for me okay I'm gonna take my whole image though and I'm gonna drop the opacity uh, let's take it well, let's say about 90 percent and the next step that I'm gonna do and again this is personal preference that blue sky bothers me when I look at it so I'm gonna change it to a slightly black and white image so let's try is it here nope there we go black and white I'm gonna say okay I'm just gonna accept the defaults but I don't want it totally black and white so I'm gonna drop that opacity down 
let's say about 30%. And that's just so it's not quite as bright. It's a little bit more muted. Uh, let's see, I'm going to bring this back up. There we go. That looks good. And this is what I'm going to claim as my background. So I'm going to do a file save and I will call it, let's see, I've done this once before. So I'm going to call it number two, backyard PSD. And this is so I can come back and alter it later as need be. But ultimately what you need this to be is a PNG file. And that keeps the transparency going. So we're going to do a file save as and we're going to choose PNG as our file type. Okay, and just do a save and agree with whatever it's telling you. All right, our next step in this process is to create an INI file that Stellarium will read, telling it to grab this background and a little bit more information. Now, I'm going to do that by opening up Microsoft Word and typing in this code. Now, I'll have this code below in the description, so you can just copy paste it in and make your own edits as need be. But basically, it's telling it that this is a landscape file. You give it a name, any name that you want to name it, give it a description, any description you want. You know, you could say that this is the northwest corner of your backyard or whatever. Type, you want this to be spherical because we want it to go in a complete circle covering our whole backyard. And map text equals, this is the name of the file. So for me, it would be number one background.png, which is what we just named our Photoshop file. Now go ahead and put in your custom latitude and longitude, and then also put in your altitude level in meters. So you would just type in uh, 100 if you're at 100 meters above sea level, okay? You don't need to put the units of measure in. And this angle rotate Z equals, and this is one that you're going to be manipulating several times until you get it just right for your backyard. In your area, you know where Polaris is. So for the first time, I would probably make this zero and load it into Stellarium and see where the north shows up in your backyard according to Stellarium. And if it's not right, you can alter this from zero to 360 degrees. And you will just start changing that angle multiple times until you get north exactly where it's supposed to be in your backyard. Now the other thing is, is if all of a sudden you're looking and Polaris is a little bit high or a little bit low for your backyard for what you're used to seeing, go back here to Photoshop and grab your entire image and move it down a few millimeters or move it up a few millimeters until you get Polaris in that right spot. See for me, Polaris is going to be right here in this little corner. So I may have to just uh, you know, move this up or down however is needed, okay? That's why we saved it as a PSD file. All right, so once you've got all of this filled in, right now it's a Word document, but you're going to want to go ahead and save it as a file, save as, and let's drop it in this directory. And the key here is, is you want this file name to be landscape, okay? and change the file type to .txt. Now I know we want an INI file, but this is a two-stepper to make this happen, okay? So go ahead and hit save. All right, so in my directory, I should have two files. One is called backyard.png or to backyard.png, whatever you named your file, and a landscape.txt file. Now we need to get in, into an INI file and it is just this easy. Control C for copy, Control B for paste, and we're just going to grab that back half and change it to .ini. That's it. And we know it may become unstable, but it will be just fine. So that part done. Easy peasy, okay? So now let's go to our Windows Explorer. Let's find out where Stellarium is keeping all of its files, and it's on your C local drive, program files, and come down here to Stellarium, okay? And let's look for landscapes, okay? In this directory, you'll notice I have a directory that you probably don't have called custom landscape. Now, I want you to create 
a custom landscape directory right now. Okay, and this is where when I open it, I am going to drag and drop my backgrounds that I created. Okay, now I know this is a little misleading. I've done this a few times today, but ultimately the PNG that I'm going to use in my final background is called AA Landscape BW, which stands for Amy Astro's Landscape in black and white, okay? And here is my landscape INI file that I just showed you how to create. All right, so this is where you're gonna put those two files that you just created. And the next step is we want to open up Stellarium, brand new, because now it's gonna recognize a new directory in that landscape folder, okay? Now that it is here, we're gonna to wanna to go to Sky and Viewing op Options window. Come over here to Landscape. And you're gonna see that my custom landscape is now sitting in this list. It knew it automatically. So it's just, it's truly magic here that it, it knew. So I have a new landscape in here called Amy Astro's Landscape. Now you can go crazy and do show fogs, ground, whatever you want it to do. I just left it here just the way it is. And I'm going to choose it. And let's see, there was one. Use this as landscape Use this landscape as default, which I've already checked it once, but the first time you go do this, go ahead and check it so it's already set up there for you. And I'll close this, and I'll come over here to the configuration window, and I'll say save my view, save my settings, so it remembers it for the next time. So let's see, let's turn on our atmosphere, and where is my background? There is my background that we just created. Now, I did have to go back and forth and change my INI file until Polaris was in the correct spot. And there's Polaris right where I needed it to. Now, I did go back into my Photoshop file and I moved this whole thing down about two millimeters just so I could get it just about right. And I had to change that rotate Z number from zero to about 150 to get the north cardinal point lined up where it needed to be in my yard. And I've gone out a few times over this last week and I've checked at various times of the day and so far it appears to be pretty correct. Now what helped me out is I was doing this during the day originally and the moon happened to be rising so that made it really easy for me to get it set up during the day and then I just popped in here and you know, did some checkups at night just to see how it went. So that's all you really need to do. You create yourself a custom landscape, you delete the sky, you save it as a PNG file, you create yourself a text file, and I used it through Word, saved it as a text file, then copied, saved as it as an INI file, dropped it into the custom landscape directory of Stellarium, and there it was. I know that sounds complicated, but really once you run through it a couple times, it's really quite easy. And I will leave that code down in the description for you so you can make your own custom INI file. So folks, now that we have a custom made background of our backyard in Stellarium, the only excuse we have for not knowing where the stars are is clouds. How perfect is that? So guys, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribe. Don't forget to hit that alert bell so you know when I upload new Astro videos. And hit that like bell, share this video with all your Astro friends, and stay tuned for you know what's coming, those lovable cats that you like to see. But this week, I think I'm going to share Pester with you. Hester is truly living up to his namesake these days. I sit down, he's on my computer, but you know what? Today of all days, he has been doing some really cute things, so stay tuned and watch for the cast at the end. All right, guys, I am Amy Astro. Thank you for watching this video and spending your time with me. I truly, truly appreciate it. I'm wishing everybody some great health, clear skies, and until the next video, I will see you all Later. Love all of y'all. Goodbye. Oh my god, I'm falling hard for you. I keep on waiting for the hurricane to come and watch the
With you, where did this come from? Lightning in my.